We arrive on the scene. It took me uh, maybe three seconds to just take a hold of what I was looking at. It was uh, it was something to see. Matter of fact, give me a one alarm, fire alarm. Give me a one alarm. And I asked dispatch to complete the one alarm, which means to send multiple companies. Hey, yeah, back this bitch up. I call for Hazmat, which is our hazardous materials officer. He comes out on the scene to deal with anything that's classified by DOT as a hazardous material, such as fuel. Oh, Ooh, this is going to be bad, dog. Go away from yes, that. Yes, indeed. That bitch can blow. See if you find a hydrant. Come on, we got to do something quick. Go on, they got a hydrant on that corner. It's going to be on that side over there. Some new information real quick. Lady said that this car, they hit a car, a passenger car on the other side, said nobody got out. One side of the street is businesses, the other side is residences. We don't want to see that gas station go up either. And yeah, that's a whole nother set of problems. So you've got life safety factor, you've got explosion potential. Sometimes we got to remember that, you know, this thing is a killer. Give me a deuce and a half. All right, put a deuce and a half up. Leave it out for right now. 503 to pass mad cab of the truck so far is on fire. Let's hump it, let's hump it. I mean, I feel helpless, but I mean, what can I do? That thing explodes right now. Do you talking about blocks? Right. Blocks of devastation. Hope the driver of that truck got out. I don't like this at all. Commander 27, back your crew out. Hot beyond explanation. All right, look. Hayden wants to back it up. Let him, let it go. Y'all gotta move on, sir. Come on, Hayden. You're working under the most stressful conditions that I can imagine. For us to put on 60 pounds of gear and go face to face with something that has no mind of its own, a little fear might want to creep in, and you got to keep that at, at bay and, and and just do the job. Watch that power line. Back up, back up, back up! I need some help! When our hoses are filled with water, they're heavy like boulders. Yeah, that's right. Back up, back up! It's getting hot. Having been a fireman before, that was the first thought in my mind was we're too close. I told Ty, it's funny, there's a trick that they teach you is to put your thumb up and look at the scene, and if you can still see it around your thumb, you're still too close. Dude, we got to back up some more. Right. Come on, move this truck. Dude, that's getting way too big, way too fast. Dude, when you see fire backing up, that's when you know, all right, we need to just back this bitch up a little bit. Just stay safe. What about the foam? You still got plans for that? Nah, it's too much for foam right now. Commander fire along. The tank then ruptured. We have a lot of fire and flames blowing out of the tank here. We don't have to let it burn Anybody for the time being. We don't know how much fuel is inside that tanker. Every truck carries 15 gallons of foam. That's not going to cut it. So we had to call in foam truck that's outfitted with the master stream nozzle that can apply foam way more than we could with a couple of hand lines. Command the 500. Uh, do we have any uh, foam truck or anything we can use? Uh, we're letting this gas tank of fire burn, burn itself out. But uh, we're probably going to need it uh, when we get able to get close enough to it. 
The first moments of a fire are the most dangerous, and it took every ounce of restraint that these guys have to stay back and not get in there and fight that fire. How long should a man be alive? A truck is responding from engine 10 quarters. One of the things that all first responders are taught that if you don't protect yourself first, you can't help anybody else. See that tornado, huh? I don't know where nobody's at. We don't know where the hour is. All it was was a, was a mango restaurant up there. Paul, I know it could be 10 bodies up there. Movie and look, uh, two of the guy's brothers are the driver, and he's asking me about him. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell him. Tell him right now, we don't have all of that information. All right, yet. that's fine. They can't find out anything until that fire gets down and we get close. At this time, we don't know anything, my man. I know where you at, but I promise, I know it's your family. And we find something out, bro, we'll come let you know. Amp it up, brother. Oh. Down to the operations, we starting to hit the uh, fire with ball. There we go. Now we're putting it out. You all right? All right, baby. All right, Ron. Good job, baby. Once the fire was out, we were able to put our eyes on the victim. Uh, you know, that, that sticks with you for a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just need to take a quick look so I can call it in. I can tell you. Point it out. The only thing I can recognize. All right. You have to be pronounced deceased by someone with a medical license, meaning a doctor. We are basically an extension of the, the doctor's hands in the field with what we do. Hey, Doc, it's Dan with New Orleans, Unit 3220. I'm on the scene of a 18-wheeler uh, fuel tanker fire. We do have one confirmed fatality in the cab of this truck. Right now, that's the only patient we're calling for a DNR on that person. We call the physician and tell them what we see and what's going on, and then they ultimately say yes. You know, the time of death is. Time of death, 11.28 PM. Copy, Dr. Nunez. Thank you, Doc. I mean, that guy was probably just starting his day. I mean, there's a lot of refineries down in that part of town. I mean, I think that's really when it hits you. Like, this guy really had no idea what was going on. Like, he had no clue that it was going to end. I, I think that's sad when you think about you know, the families and his, his friends and everything in his life that changes as a result of a tragic accident. It's always good to see them boys walking around when it's over. I know, right? We may not have been able to save the driver of that tanker, but we did what we set out to do, and that was to protect our neighborhood. We're tasked with the duty of holding that night watch, keeping everyone safe. And amidst all that chaos, all that craziness, and all that noise, and we got the job done. Good evening, I'm Kim Holden. And I'm Nancy Parker. Police say the fire trapped the driver of the 18-wheeler and he died. The woman who police say was driving the wrong way when she crashed into the truck is now under arrest. Be safe, be strong, let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Grant <laughs> the knife, grant the knife. They're not dead. I can work with that. 